Hi, my name is Matthias, and today I'm going to present uh, ZNS avoiding the block interface tax for flash based SSDs. This is joint work between Carnegie Mellon University's PDL lab, Penn State, and Western Digital. So, the block interface tax. So, for several decades, Start software has been built on top of the block interface. Uh, Start is represented as an array of fixed sized blocks, and each block can be read, written, and or written atomically. And it was originally adopted for hard drives, uh, and it was then later adopted for SSDs. But where hard drives natively supported in place updates, the characteristics of the flash media uh, that are used by SSDs today does not. So while we got a good adoption of SSDs in the market by SSDs exposing a common block interface, the same as hard drives, and there are actually some inherent overheads to do that within an SSD. So SSDs, uh, flash media requires to be written uh, sequentially in what is known as flash blocks. And instead of those flash blocks becomes an erase block. And those erase blocks has to be uh, written sequentially, but then also erased before you can write again. So to handle that uh, lock structured write requirement of the flash media, SSDs implemented what is known as a flash translation layer. And that layer to have good performance had like uh, media overvisioning, like 7% to 28% overvisioning of the media, higher cost, but also lower performance due to uh, the SSD having to find the race blocks and if there was, um, when it wanted to write new data. And if there was any valid pages within those erase, blo erase blocks, it had to move it first before it could reset it and uh, write to it again. As the industry has matured over the last a couple of decades, we are now getting to the point where this translation layer is inhibiting that kind of uh, uses of SSDs. It's becoming too expensive. So the industry came together around two years ago where we started to work on its own namespace SSDs. And the goal was to get rid of this block interface tax. So what if we could write data onto flash-based SSDs through some append-only regions and the idea is that we move the fine-grained data placement and SSDs. The fine-grained is the, the data placement within kind of an erase block that writes into that. We move that responsibility up to the host. And what, when we do that, what we gain is 7 to 28% extra capacity because the, the capsule collection is no longer necessary for the fine-grained data placement. We uh, reduce the, the lower, like the cost, but we also get predictable high performance. So one of the ways we can kind of show that off um, when we compare a ZNS SSD to, uh, towards a block-based SSD is to simply write to it and then see the performance when this collapse collection kicks off inside of the conventional block-based uh, SSDs. So here we have three SSDs. One is ZNS SSD, uh, the light blue with 0% overvisioning. And then we have two block SSDs, one with 7% and one with 28%. And then what we do is this is a two terabyte SSD. And as we write the first two terabyte here, um, the performance is great for all th three of SSDs. But as soon as we kind of the garbage collection process kicks in, basically for the 7% overvision SSD, we see the performance drop more and more down to roughly 380 megabytes per second. And the, the one with the 28% overvision drops down to around 600 megabytes per second. But since the, the ZNS this SSD doesn't have this overhead of garbage collection, it can consistently continue to write at the full speed of the, of the media. But there is a catch. So it only works if the software layers above are modified to support this limit, uh, limitation. So there's uh, the question that becomes then which applications can evolve to use the ZNS interface um, and how. There's two parts to it. One is uh, the hardware and one is another one is the host software. So a ZNSD, what it does is relinquish DC responsibilities that are traditionally carried out by the, by the SSD FTL. Uh, what the ZNF interface does is that it enables the SSD to translate sequential zone writes onto these distinct uh, erase blocks uh, within the SSD. Since these random writes are not are disallowed by the interface and zones must be explicitly reset by the host, the data placement occurs at the coarse-grained uh, level of zones. So we kind of what we do here is that data placement responsibility of the SSD 
we split it into fine grained, which is a data placement within an erase block or within a zone, and the coarse grained, which is kind of erase block selecting which erase block to garbage collect or um, uh, or kind of write to next and so on. Um, and for a ZNSSD, what is being moved, the responsibility of the fine grained data placement is what is being moved to the host. The the cost grain data placement continues to be within the SSD. It still, that means an SSD still does wear leveling of the media and so on. But it also means that the media reliabilities continues to be managed within the SSD. Such that if you have a, a read error or a write error, uh, the SSD, it is still the job of the SSD to manage those errors. So that's kind of for the ZNS SSD and for the hardware side, the guarantees you get from there. Then do, how do you kind of adopt these with the host stack? And we lay out three different ways to do this. There's the host side FTL, uh, file systems, and what we call end-to-end -end data placement. So for host side FTL, the idea of that is that you implement like an FTL on the host that exposes the ZN SSD as a block interface into SSD. Issue with that implementation is that the high system overhead respect to DRAM and CPU and enables workloads that specifically require random uh, write characteristics. The other one we see is that we then, if we want to take a step further, we have file systems where where we kind of modify the file system to place data onto zones using uh, file system characteristics. What we do get with that is that we get more efficient use of resources as the file system simply places data more efficiently. And then the last one, and it's the most where you go into full Monty, is where you go into end data pl placement and where, you where the application places data on the zones using kind of the application uh, characteristics. Then we eliminate all the interactions overhead caused by the like uh, FTL data placement and the file system. And we get the highest performance and the lowest write uh, application. For, for this work, what we've done is that we enabled one file system, F2FS, and enable it to work with ZNS SDs. And the other work that we explored is to go in to uh, RocksDB and build a new storage backend called ZenFS, which enables RocksDB to run natively on top of uh, ZNS SSDs. Right, so as part of this work to enable these new type of SSDs, we had to implement support in the Linux kernel. We had to update what's known as the zone block device subsystem in the Linux kernel. We added support into the NVMe device driver we added in um, support for like active zones. So an active zone, uh, a ZNS SSD has a set of resources, active and open. And active zones are where this kind of zones that are being write, written to. And you can only have a limited set of them at any point in time open. Um, and then we went on to extend F2FS to run on CNS uh, as well. So for RocksDB and ZenFS, what we've done here is that we build a new storage backend that enables us to hook in instead of the POSIX backend that's currently uh, available in Roxby, you can actually replace it with this uh, ZenFS uh, storage backend. So the storage backend here is extent based, which means that files from the RocksDB perspective is mapped onto extents and extents are mapped onto uh, zones. So there can be multiple extents within a zone, but an extent cannot sp span multiple zones. Then there is, um, so that's for the data, then there's journal data. So there's write ahead data, file identifiers and memory allocation structures and so on. Then, and then there's kind of to manage kind of the, the ZNS SD, we have some zone management implementations where we kind of manage uh, the file size due to compression and compaction, write lifetime hints from blocks to be. Uh, to simplify the gaps collection, but also limits like how many active resources then can be available at any point in time. Cool. So these two are the major works that we kind of uh, added in as part of this work. So as part of this evaluation uh, that we did, we we were fortunate to have access to production hardware platform, uh, SSD platform, which could expose itself as either a block interface SSD or a, a ZNS SSD. So we had the opportunity where we had the same hardware, same media, same controller, uh, DRAM and so on. And the only difference was a small difference in, in the firmware that was loaded onto the SSD. 
And what we could do that is that then we can kind of get take out all of the issues with kind of like where we're comparing different media types, controller types, and so on, but simply have a platform where we could compare like apples to apples. Um, and this particular SSD was a two terabyte SSD. Um, and what for the block based uh, version, we had like we had one with 7% overvisioning, one with 28% overvisioning, and then the ZNS uh, firmware loaded with has 0% overvisioning. Um, and for this particular ZNS SSD, we have the support is 14 active zones. The zone size is, is two gigabyte and the zone capacity with the writable capacity of a zone is around 1077 megabytes. And then we kind of went off and, and, uh, together with the FIO support that we added, uh, tested the raw performance. And then we tested box to be, uh, both where the native XFS and F2FS, just block-based, but we then also tested F2FS with zone support and rocks to be uh, with ZenFS support, All right? So for the first thing here, what we see is that um, the, the right target where we kind of, the, on the left side, we see, we kind of saying, hey, we want to um, say we want to do 400 megabytes per second, 500 megabytes up to a gigabyte per second. And then we see if the SSD can kind of achieve that. And we see that the ZN SSD can achieve it, but for the 28% OP SSD it drops off around 600 megabytes per second. And the 7% OP drops off around 380 megabytes per second. And um, so the rest of the here, the difference here between uh, 380 megabytes and gigabytes, that's actually garbage collection overhead within the SSD itself. And we see that by because when we have the when we measure the read latency um, and when we do reads at the same time, we see that as we kind of increase the writes, the read latency scales linearly with the write load for the ZN SSD. But for the um, for the uh, block based SSD, we see kind of the the average read latency increase significantly until it kind of tops up a lot tops out and kind of becomes here because there's no more kind of performance left in the SSD. All right. And then as part of then the next step was to look at RocksDB with the end-to-end -end integration and see how that compared and together with the file system we enabled. So for, for these experiments, we both have XFS and F2FS uh, running off um, a, uh, the block SSD with 28% overvisioning. We have fill random uh, we have two experiments, fill random and overwrite. Fill random begins at a clean state, and you kind of see there's the same kind of number of operations that's being carried out roughly between these four uh, different type of implementations. But then as we kind of go to the overwrite, which runs after the fill random, now the drive has been preconditioned. So now we actually see the real overhead compared of the, of the conventional uh, block-based SSDs. And here we see the performance uh, dropped significantly, whereas the ZenFS end-to-end uh, -end integration um, uh, have like uh, twice as high as performance as the block-based SSD. Another way to look at this is that um, the write implication for CNS is 1x, XFS is uh, roughly at a 2x, and, when, and F2FS as is, has a, a write amp of 2.4 uh, when we measure that. So there's an inherent overhead in that which um, requires extra writes within the SSDs. Then the other part we looked at, that was kind of the write performance. Then the, we also looked at writes, a lot of reads, and while also doing writes at the same time. So there's three experiments here. One is uh, where we just do a simple reads, and we see there's not that much perf performance difference when we just do random reads. Um, there is a slight performance difference in the overall kind of tail latencies, um, where we see like, a 30, 40% improvement in the latency, uh, but overall there's not that big of a difference. Then what, another experiment that we then did was concurrent writes, where we did like 20 megabyte writes per second and then did this random read lookup at the same time. And what we saw there was that, well, the read performance didn't increase, um, it decreased a little bit. Um, and, but we also saw that on, when we have F2FS here and XFS, they get much higher um, uh, tail latencies, whereas we have significantly improved tail latencies when we use this either F2FS or ZenFS. And then at last, we kind of removed the 20 megabyte uh, per second write limit and just get, went full speed ahead. And what we saw there was we had the same kind of read performance, 
uh, but we actually were able to achieve that while doing the same, uh, like nearly twice as, uh, as many rights. Um, and that had an impact on where we get really high tail latencies for both XFS and F2FS. Um, we actually get like a forex improvement in, in, in that alone. Uh, towards. So we can actually write four times faster, but while we do that, we actually also get four times better uh, tail latencies. Cool. So in summary, uh, ZNSDs enable higher performance and lower cost per byte flat space SSDs. Uh, by shifting responsibilities for managing data placement within a race box from FTLs to host software, CNS, CNS eliminates the need for fine-grained indirection table garbage collection and media provisioning. Uh, we find that the 99.9 .9 percentile random read latency for uh, RocksDB with MFS is at least two to four times lower on a CN SSD compared to a block interface SSD, and the write throughput is 2x higher. Um, and all this work uh, that's part of this paper is today upstream uh, and available and all through the appropriate uh, open source projects. Thank you.